السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I would like uh, to share with you some of the common question that I see it in my masjid and maybe uh, in so many other places people have concern about. Uh, number one, when people sitting on chair praying in the masjid, where they should put the chair? Some people they put it uh, basically where they sat, where their knees will be next to the people who are standing in the line. And that's wrong because whenever we line up lines in the Salat, it should be according to the shoulders. So when you're sitting, you should be your shoulder basically next to the people uh, to you, the people next to you, to their shoulder. Uh, that's if you're going to pray sitting. Because also pushing the chair back, it means the person behind you cannot make sujood, cannot make sujood. But what if you're going to be standing during the Salat, but during the course you're going to be sitting in the chair? Here, you might be able to push the chair back, then you pull it up when about you making sujood and rukur, so you give a space to the person behind you. And if you couldn't do that, you just it's okay to be in front of the line uh, if you can't make that movement. This movement in the Salat, it is permissible because of the need. One also the common uh, uh, things about chairs, a lot of time people put the chairs in the back, they said, oh, don't put it in the front, and I think the masjid should uh, have a policy of that. It doesn't matter if they are in the front or in the back. I think it's not fair if somebody come early to be pushed in the back. Uh, but anyway, it's permissible to be, the, my point is permissible to have your chair even in the first line, line in the masjid. The second point a lot of people ask me about is the issue of, Sheikh, I want to pray more after the witter. I'll pray more after the witter. Uh, let's say the Imam pray 11 raka'ah or 21 raka'ahs, whatever the case is. Uh, if you want to pray extra prayer at home, what you should do? The best thing to do is to pray with the Imam until the Imam finish. And after the Imam finish, you stand up and make one extra prayer, one extra raka'ah, then you make salam. Then after that, you pray as much as you want at home and you end your salat with one raka'ah, which is we call it the witr. Why we say this is the best thing? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever pray with the imam until the imam finish as if he or she prayed the whole night. So if you finish your salat before the imam do his witr, that means you left the salat before it's complete. So you lose the ajr of this hadith, the reward of this hadith. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ said, Made the, make the last prayer of the night witr prayer. So you don't want to be praying witr, then after that you pray two, two, two. Number three, the Prophet ﷺ said, you cannot have two witrs in one night. So if you make witr with the Imam, you cannot make another witr later on. So that's why the solution that I give you, stand up and you add more rakah, will be the best solution, will be the best solution. So what if I prayed witr with the Imam, later on I found myself, have half an hour, can I pray? Yes, you can pray. And in this case, you can pray two rakahs, two rakahs, two rakahs. Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet ﷺ prayed two rakahs, and this is, was before uh, uh, Fajr and after his witr, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of the companions even used to do something uh, interesting. They used to break the earlier witr with one rakah. So let's say you pray at 11 in the early in the night. Then in the middle of the night, you stand up and you pray one rakah. So that will make the 11, 12. Then after that, they pray as much as they want. Then they ended up with one rakah. Uh, some of the companions did that. Some of the scholars, the successor did that. It's not my favorite choice because the Prophet said, don't make two witters. Now you're making even three witters. But anyway, so the solution that I give you will be the best solution. Uh, also, people ask, can I pray more than 11 rakahs? Yes, absolutely you can. The Prophet ﷺ said, Salatul Layl, Mathna, Mathna, 2, 2, 2. Uh, uh, yes, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, as Aisha said, that he did not pray more than 11 Ramadan or other than Ramadan. But Aisha is speaking about most of his prayer. But definitely Aisha, radiallahu anha, she's not aware of every salah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to do while she's sleeping. In so many hadiths, she wakes up and she finds him praying sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Yes, there is no one, as far as I know, among the early Muslim scholars or among the fuqaha ever said, is not allowed to pray more than 11 rak'ah. No ever, no scholars in the, among the fuqaha, among the tradition books of fiqh, as far as I know, have said uh, that, have said that. So you can pray as many as, as you want, and this should not be an issue of fighting, especially inside the masajid. 
Do we have to make khatm al-Qur'an in Ramadan? It is good to make khatm al-Qur'an during Ramadan because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to review the whole Qur'an of Jibreel. It is the sunnah of Jibreel with the Prophet Sallallahu that every Ramadan they read the whole entire Qur'an together. So Isma' al-Qur'an, listening to the whole Qur'an in Ramadan, something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to do every Ramadan. So it will be good to do it with your community. Now, uh, Taraweeh comes late in the night. Uh, uh, maybe people cannot do, we don't, you don't have to. You can read as much as you can. The point is enjoy the Salat, concentrate in the Salat, enjoy the recitation, don't be just going too fast. The point is to really two short rakahs, short prayer, and maybe 40 minutes or, th or, or so, but you enjoy it, you concentrate in it, is much better than anything else. That's why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, was asking Taraweeh, how many verses should the Imam read? And Imam Ahmed said, according to what his community uh, can take. So according to the community, according to the people behind you and praying behind you, the majority of them what they want. Uh, so that's uh, uh, another issue about the, uh, the issue of uh, Taraweeh. Also, Dua Al-Qunut. It is Sunnah to make Dua Al-Qunut. It is uh, uh, also recommended for you to say Ameen. Uh, because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us when you say Ameen in Al-Fatiha, it is Sunnah, we learn it even in Al-Fatiha because of the Dua to say uh, Ameen, yani, Oh Allah, I ask you to accept or Ameen, it means I repeat all this Dua again, yani, yani, as if you're making twice, you make the Dua twice. So it is allowed to say it Ameen out loud and to ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to accept from you. You can make Dua with what came in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or you make your own Dua uh, uh, as long as the meanings are correct, are the meaning as correct. Can you make dua in English? Yes, you can make dua in your sujood and your ruku uh, uh, if you want in English uh, uh, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you if you don't know Arabic or any language that you want. It is important to educate yourself about the ruling of Ramadan, to know what can break your fasting and what will not break your fast. What are the recommended act of fasting, the obligations act of fasting, and there is, alhamdulillah, plenty of uh, uh, information uh, available. Uh, with this, I uh, will come to the conclusion of this episode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, and don't forget to visit uh, our website, uh, Share the Khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.